On today's episode, I'm going to show you how I made this nice stand for my X-Carve. And I'll even show you a first cut. It's CNC Sunday. Let's carve something. And here's the pieces that I ordered. Four pieces of the 1000 millimeter extrusion, two pieces of the 1500 millimeter extrusion, some button head cap screws, some angle extrusion brackets, and some T-slot nuts. And here's the pieces all laid out, plus I got four casters for the base. The first step was to find the center point of the long extrusions. It was 29 and a half inches. You could have done it in a metric, it would have been 750 millimeters. But I checked it from both ends and 29 and a half was the exact center point. So I marked it and then it was ready to cut. So I got out my metal cutting saw, put on my safety glasses, and then I clamped down the extrusion so the mark lined up exactly in the center of the metal cutoff blade. Now this is aluminum so it cut pretty easy. It's just sliced right through it and when I was done I had two equal sized pieces. I did this again to the other long piece and I ended up with the four legs. Now there were little pieces that needed to be sanded off so I took it over to my disc sander and I sanded each side so it was nice and smooth. And then I sanded the end of it so that was also nice and smooth and flat. I did this for each leg and then it was ready to assemble. So I added the four legs to the bench and now I could start assembling. The first step is I took the screws and the T-nuts and installed two of them on each angle bracket. This would make it a lot easier to assemble once these were all set up ready to go. I laid the pieces out on my bench and it just barely fit. I put a bracket at each corner and then I was ready to assemble these. So then I took the angle bracket, lined up the T-nut and slid it into the extrusion. Then I did the same thing for the second extrusion. This formed the 90 degree angle and I lined everything up and then tightened everything in place. I wanted to make sure this was square so eventually I would use a square to check it but it really wasn't necessary. Once this thing was tightened up everything looked good. Now before I did any other corner I slid a T-nut in down the one rail. Then I installed T-nuts and screws to one side of the caster. This way I could slide it into one of the rails. So I lined up the T-nuts and I slid the caster in place. So this gave me two points of contact. Then all I had to do was line up the T-nut that I slid down that other rail, insert a screw and lock washer, and I had three points that would hold this caster in place. I did that four times and that gave me my base on wheels. Now I left the corners loose enough that I could pull the extrusions apart because I need to slip in the angle brackets for the upright legs. I put two in, one facing one direction and then a second one facing the opposite direction. Then I squeezed everything back together and tightened the screws up. So now I needed to install the four legs that I cut on the metal saw. I slid them into the angle bracket that I had just put onto the base and tightened it in the upright position. Then I slid it to the end so it lined up and tightened the other screw. I did that four times and I had my legs in base. It was now ready to install the X-carve. I placed a table and some empty filament cartridges to hold the X-carve above the stand. This way I could bring the stand up to the X-carve. So I slid an angle bracket into the extrusion of the X-carve. And then I brought the leg up into the other side of the angle bracket and tightened everything up. So then I went to the other side and tightened up that leg. In fact, I did all four corners, so then the X-carve was holding the base up in the air. And then one by one, I went to each corner and removed some of the filament cartridges. This brought the whole unit down to its wheels. So once I got all four corners removed, then I could come around to the front and get that table out of the way. And once the table was out of the way, the X-carve was now completely on its stand and I could move it around. Well, kinda. I had to unlock the casters first. But once I did, this thing wheeled around beautifully. Okay, time to make our first cut. 
So I go to the easel.com software, which is free from Inventables, and I tell it which material. I'm going to use a birch and then a 200 by 150 millimeter board size. So I got to tell it the size. That way it shows up on the screen here, the right size. And then I tell it three millimeters thick. This is kind of important to tell it how deep it is. And then I tell it I want to just cut at 0.5 millimeters per pass. And that's pretty light, but it's it'll work good. And then I set it to 700 millimeters per second because that seems to work good for me. And then I tell it my cutting size, my, my bit size, which is 1 8th, 0.125. Now I'm ready to add my design. So first I'm going to zoom in here and try to center this so you can see it. And then I go up to the text tool and I'm going to pick Bimeo as the text style. And now what I do is I just double click here. Whoops. I'll just double click on this and then type CNC and then off click it and then I can position it wherever I want and I'll try to just center it a little bit. We'll adjust this in a minute. And now I want to add the word Sunday. So once I get this in place I'll just go up and click on the same text tool, same Bimeo, double click on this guy and then type in Sunday and oops I want capitals. So let me go back and type all capitals Sunday and then I'll try to center this guy to the CNC and then what I can do is I can grab this whole thing and then center them both so if I just like draw a box around them both it's gonna grab them both and then I can move it where I want and get it centered and then now what I do is I tell it how deep I want this to cut. So I'm going to hold the shift key and click on both and I'm going to adjust this to one millimeter. So I want it to cut to a depth of one millimeter and I want it to cut on the path. So it just cuts the letters, not the whole thing, not a fill. Now this is a little bit big. So let me resize this just so it's a little bit smaller. It fits in the board better and then I'll recenter it. And there we go. And so that's all I had to do. My design is created. Now I just need to carve it. After clicking on carve, it just goes through a series of steps. I confirm the material thickness. I confirm that it's clamped down. I confirm my bit size. And then I had already homed it prior to this manually, so I confirm that it's homed in the corner of the board. Then I clicked on raise bit. It raises the bit. I turn on the spindle. It's spinning, so I say it's on. And I just click start carving and it starts cutting the board. Now it cuts a lot slower than shown here. This is in time lapse mode. It cuts each letter twice. It goes down a half a millimeter and then a second half a millimeter to give me the one millimeter total depth. So you can see each letter and then it homes itself. I got next week's filament Friday printing in the background, so that's the noise you hear. Anyway, this turned out really, really great. And it's a nice size and it fits nicely right next to my 3D print bench. And because it's on wheels, I can move it wherever I want. Now, one thing I do need to improve, it's a little bit wobbly in this direction. Because I don't have any angle brackets going that way, so it makes sense. Now, it hasn't affected the operation or the cutting, but I do get a little bit of wobble in it. But now, I do plan to add some other extrusion pieces to make shelving in here so I can store wood underneath it and maybe even the vacuum. I haven't figured out exactly how to do that yet. I also want to make some brackets to install the electronics. Mount that somewhere in here. And I may do that with the 3D printer because I 3D printed some extrusions, although in plastic. So I know I have the exact fit. So now I can make brackets that just slide into these things and make any kind of custom piece I want. So that may be a future Filament Friday. So that's it for this week's CNC Sunday. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you're watching. And future CNC Sundays for right now are probably going to be every other Sunday, depending on how my schedule is. And then maybe eventually we'll get to every Sunday, but right now, every other Sunday. So please tune back in. Until then, I'll see you next time.